Hello viewers, welcome to my channel Pon Virus Citadel. I am Nalini Rajagovindan. And in continuation with my videos on uh, teaching aptitude for paper 1, UGC NET exam. Today in this video, we are going to talk about the various models of teaching and the theories of learning which support these models of teaching and also their application in the classroom. How each model is used in the classroom with various examples. Whenever we say teaching model, there is a tendency to mistake this teaching model for the models used in teaching. The teaching aids used by the classroom teacher, which aid in teaching like uh, 2D models, 3D models, working models, non-working models. So they are different from the models of teaching. Here the teaching model refers to a pattern or a plan which is used to shape the curriculum or to shape the course or to shape the classroom so that the teacher can select the proper appropriate instructional materials to make the class effective. So this plan or the pattern will help guide the teacher to effectively deliver her lecture. This is what the definition given by Joyce and Whale. And usually we are in this video, we are going to discuss about the four main models of teaching. And each model is designed for a specific purpose. And we will see about each one of the model and the purpose it serves. And these are the four different teaching models. They are very broad categories. They are very comprehensive. Each one includes various sub models, methods, strategies and techniques. They are behavior modification model or behavior altering model or contingency management model. And the second one is information processing model. And the third one is social interaction model and the fourth one is personal development model. Each model has got a theoretical background. Each model supports a theory of learning. What is a theory of learning? A theory is something that which explains. A theory of learning explains what is learning. How does it happen? So here in behavior modification model, it supports the theory behaviorism, which explains learning as a behavior change. So according to this behaviorism school of thought, learning is something that should result in a change in the behavior. So this model of teaching aims to change the behavior. It may be any behavior, the outward uh, behavior, the physical behavior or attitude or the changing the sentiments or changing the moods of the student. So this model basically uh, takes up the theory of behaviorism and each model has got its own proponents the experts, the scientists, the psychologists, the educationists and uh, each model has got its own experimental base based on which these theories are developed and these models are developed. And the second model, information processing model, it focuses on the brain, the activities of the brain. While the behavior modification model emphasizes the modification of the behavior, the outward behavior, the information processing model focuses on what is happening inside your brain. So how does the information is perceived? How is it stored in your memory? How is it retrieved? How you can analyze the information? How you can interpret it? 
how do you form concepts how do you pro solve your problem how do you develop a principle out of this informations and concepts so all this are given importance in information processing model which supports the cognitive theory of learning which again emphasizes on the activities of brain so this cognitive school of psychology it focuses on the on the brain's activities and the next model and the next model is social interaction model which is based on the theory of constructivism in learning what is constructivism here according to this school of thought the knowledge is constructed knowledge is not just given by the teacher or taken by the student but it is constructed by both the teacher as well as the learner both of them together construct new knowledge from what is already known from the previous experience how do they construct through various types of social interactions they undertake in the society or maybe in the school or in the college or in the society so the focus is mainly on the interactions that happens between student to student student to teachers among the teachers and among the various persons in the society so that is where the knowledge is constructed and there is nothing like a correct knowledge or wrong one so everybody is right and everybody is wrong so this is social interaction model is uh, uh, mostly student centered while on the other hand the behavior modification model and information processing model is teacher centered and in the last one personal development model which is also the learner center it is backed by the learning theory humanistic psychology this humanistic psychology depends on positive psychology it focuses mainly on self concept development of self awareness and self motivation self actualization so this is also called as non directive model of teaching where the teacher does not direct the pupil here the teacher is not called as a teacher at all she is uh, termed as motivator facilitator or a guide mentor because the, the role of the teacher is like a guide she just motivates the student to bring out his or her fullest potentiality possible to achieve the maximum so these are the four main groups or the main families of teaching model and we will see each one of the model and each one of the model has got a different scope and the, any prudent teacher after selecting her objective she should be first be sure of what is her goal what is that she wants to teach what is that she wants from the learner then she will choose she or he will choose the model accordingly and develop the strategies and methods now well each of this model has got some fundamental elements and as i have told you earlier each model has got a theoretical background like a behavior modification model 
is based on the behaviorism theory of learning and information processing model is based on the theory of cognitism and uh, the social interaction model is based on the theory of constructivism and uh, the personal development model is based on humanistic positive, positive humanistic psychology so each model has is backed up by its own theory and each model has got a focus see what is the first model behavior modification model focus it focuses on the change in the behavior and the information processing model it focuses on the brain's activity like concept formation or uh, classification or comparison or analysis or synthesis or uh, uh, idea development and the social interaction model aims to construct new knowledge on any issue and the personal development model develops the personality the self inside the learner so each model has got its own focus or the own um, team and what is syntax syntax is the steps so each model has got certain prescribed steps steps how to go about for the teacher and the social system is the classroom climate so each model of teaching requires a different classroom ambience for example in the case of social interaction model you need a more interactive uh, space so where the students and the teacher both can go around and talk to each other and converse and come to a uh, conclusion on the other hand a behavior modification model where it is teacher center the teacher takes the central role and she gives instructions after instructions so, and the personal development model the uh, Uh, classroom climate will be more personal the teacher will have one to one talk motivating the students so each model will have a different social system social system here refers to the classroom climate and principles of reaction the teacher is given a set of uh, principles when to uh, reinforce and when not to do it for example in the social interaction model it is more of the students who will be doing the uh, talking or discussion so the teacher will remain in the background so these all come under the principles of reaction so each model has got its own principles of reaction and support system each model has its own support system what is support system the teaching aids and other materials used in the classroom and application so where it is applied each model has got its own scope i told you if you want some change in the behavior of the student you will go for behavior modification model and if you want some activities of the brain involved like analysis interpretation and calculation comparison and problem solving and concept formation then the teacher will choose the information processing model and if it involves a social issue like for example whether the exam need is to be scrapped or is to be retained then the teacher can go in for jurisprudential inquiry model which comes under social interactive model what is jurisprudent inquiry model the teacher acts as a judge or sometimes even the students can be made as a judges where the uh, topic the issue is presented by the students the both the sides are presented discussed with evidence so this is called a ju jurisprudential inquiry model so this is suitable for some of the current social uh, or political issues and uh, the personal development model is suitable for other purposes like suppose you want to motivate your student who is not willing to take up any competitive exam who is not willing to 
take up this uh, net exam so he has got the post graduate qualification but he has got his own apprehension for appearing uh, in the net exam saying that he is very poor in logical reasoning or is very poor in mathematical uh, intelligence so you can motivate them that he has got the potential to do it all that is needed is simple uh, arithmetic which he has learnt in the schooling or in the college level so then the teacher should adapt the personal development model so each model has got its own application so these are all the various elements of a model of teaching this model behavior modification model or uh, behavior changing model is also known as contingency management model because uh, behaviors are contingent upon consequences so any behavior which is rewarded is retained and repeated and any behaviors which are not rewarded or which are punished or not retained so that is what contingency management means and usually it is this model of teaching which impacts the scores on the various standardized tests that are conducted for basic skills like reading writing arithmetic etc because all this involve training 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 where it is teacher center the teacher gives a lot of instructions and the students follow it because they are getting some reward it may be marks or it's maybe prizes or grades or a pass so these are these uh, model uh, which come under the behavior system model uh, they impact the scores much more than the other models as we had seen earlier each model of teaching has got its own experimental base and uh, this one is a famous experiment by paulau who is a behavioristic psychologist and he did experiments on the dogs drooling where the dog is tied and uh, every day the dog was given food and it used to drool and he made a device which will collect the saliva and uh, is this uh, saliva container is attached to a needle which will draw the graph on a rotating drum so every day he used to give the dog food and the dog used to salive it that is natural but after some time what he did was he accompanied the food along with the ringing of a bell so every day he used to ring a bell just before giving the dog the food so this continued for some weeks so after some time the dog it used to salive it at seeing the side of the food but after a month this continued for a month after a month what he did was he just gave the dog he just rang the bell without giving any food even then the dog was salivating that he could see in the graph of the drum so how does it happen because the dog is trained because every day it used to be given the first the bell sound and then the food bell and then the food bell followed by food bell followed by food so the dog has eventually learned to associate the bell sound with the food so later on only when the bell was rung he started salivating because he associated the sound with the food so he has learned so this is called conditioning and this is 
but this has got lot of educational implication and this is used in behavioristic model of teaching so in the above experiment what we saw was the u s leading to u r what is u s unconditioned stimulus leading to unconditioned response so any stimulus will lead to response so here the stimulus was food which was unconditioned the natural stimulus and leading to the natural response of salivation which is unconditioned response which is natural enough and in the second set of experiment there was this cs what is cs conditioned stimulus what is conditioned stimulus the ringing of the bell so that was given prior to the unconditioned stimulus namely the food so this unconditioned stimulus was paired with the conditioned stimulus and that also resulted in unconditioned response namely salivation okay and in the last set of experiment that is after a month just cs was there leading to cr what is cs the conditioned stimulus only the bell was rung and there was this response of salivation which has now become conditioned response it is not the natural response but it is the learnt conditioned response so that is why the ur has become cr which is salivation you know now how does this affect what impact does this have in our education system how does it help our teaching model let us see by conditioning we can form good habits among the learners especially among the children by providing uh, the proper stimulus we can form good habits like uh, for example uh, seeing the sight of the teacher the children always stand up immediately that becomes a reflex action they are conditioned in such a way that as soon as the teacher enters they automatically they stand up so this is by repeatedly giving the same stimulus and even good attitudes and sentiments can be formed and uh, this is very useful in language learning for example uh, the children or just to talk to see look at the picture of the apple and they a and immediately they say a for apple they would not even uh, see p p l e there they just see a and immediately they say apple and uh, they go on like this b boy so this is all conditioning by repeatedly giving the same stimulus the same response is got that is a change in the behavior so this is uh, this is very useful in uh, bringing about good habits and removal of uh, bad habits how does it happen by uh, deconditioning so some bad habits you notice among the children so you do it some you give some kind of uh, punishment not in the uh, real sense but not giving reward is also a punishment so not saying good also a kind of punishment so that can be Uh, remove the bad habits can be removed by deconditioning so these are all the uh, major educational implication where behaviorism is used in the classroom so this model information processing model is associated with the activities of the brains like concept formation principle formation and it is backed up by uh, cognitivism in psychology Gagne is a cognitivist psychologist and he has given a hierarchy of intellectual skills he has ordered various intellectual skills in the increasing order starting from signal learning to problem solving the lowermost level is occupied by signal learning which is also known as classical conditioning what we saw in pavlov's uh, dogs salivating experiment and here 
in signal learning just the signal or the stimulus is presented and the response is elicited and uh, it is the very lowermost level of learning and then comes the second level sr learning or instrumental or operant conditioning where more than the stimulus the response is given more importance and reinforcement plays a, a greater role here because behaviors are contingent upon uh, the consequences the effect uh, has got more importance so then third level is chain learning where a series of sr series of stimulus stimuli are given and the responses are followed example like in swimming where the first the hand stroke is learned the next the other hand next the uh, leg next the uh, followed by the other leg so a series of sr are given and learned and then comes the fourth level of uh, learning uh, namely verbal associative learning where uh, the child or the learner is able to associate the various signs or the pictures or the symbols uh, with the idea and just by seeing the word he is able to understand the concept and then the multiple discrimination uh, like uh, playing the musical notes the learner is able to discriminate the difference between the identical uh, uh, sounds and then comes the concept formation this is the next level of learning where uh, the learner is able to form some concept based on the given uh, information or the facts and then he is able to formulate the principle using that concept and then finally uh, the last level or the eighth level of learning the problem solving or the critical thinking level which is the highest level of thinking the highest level of the intellectual skill that is he is able to apply all that he has learned so far that the signal learning or associative learning or multiple discrimination and the concepts he has learned and the applying the principles he is able to solve the real life problem so this is uh, Uh, called as uh, gagnes hierarchy or the conditions or the steps of learning bruner is another psychologist and he has contributed both to cognitivism and to constructivism and he believed in both and these are some of the his contributions uh, learning readiness means uh, the students willingness to learn and spiral learning uh, is that he says that the same concept should be repeated at various levels of learning for example uh, you study about even in the lower classes you learn about our home or what is the surroundings where we live where we live and then in higher classes in sixth standard you study about where we live we study about uh, the planet earth and then even uh, still you go up higher classes you study more about earth and other planets also so that is what is called spiral learning and also he says concepts are to be presented in various forms like in an active forms and iconic forms and symbolic forms symbolic form is for the higher level of learning an active form is for the lower uh, the younger people for small children where they have to learn by touching things or by doing things so that is an active form of concept formation and iconic form is just by seeing the uh, pictures or the image that is for the uh, middle age children and for the higher uh, level students uh, it has got to be the concept have to be presented in the symbolic form because they are able to make sense out of uh, formulas and symbols so all these three an active form and iconic form and the symbolic form all these should be mixed in a spiral form that is what is meant by spiral learning 
and he has contributed much to concept formation how to form concepts uh, for example uh, like uh, living and uh, non living things see you can uh, ask them to draw a concept map giving the all the attributes of living things and the attributes of non living things so and then he has contributed much to constructivism and uh, what is constructivism that is constructing new knowledge from the old already existing knowledge and meaningful learning learning should always be meaningful no nonsense activities are allowed permitted in the classroom all the learning should be meaningful the end result should be meaningful and learning to learn and knowing to know and thinking about thinking so that is otherwise known as metacognition thinking about thinking and he has contributed much to the concept of metacognition how to learn you have to learn how to learn and you have to think how to think so these are all the concepts that come under metacognition and i'll be making a separate video on metacognition because that is my phd thesis is all about metacognition and uh, he laid a very great importance on categorization so according to bruner categorization is everything so you need categorization in order to perceive things you need uh, categorization in order to understand things you need to uh, categorize in order to form concepts so for everything you need uh, categorization what is categorization just grouping uh, grouping similar things and uh, uh making dissimilar things in separate groups so these are all uh, bruner's contributions towards cognitivism and towards constructivism and this is the information processing model for memory so how does our memory process the information so it is a must for all the student to know how does our memory function see here there is a sensory register into which all the sensory inputs enter what are the sensory inputs everything that comes uh, visually or uh, uh, through our uh, ears the oral oral or uh, the visual inputs or the tactile input everything that comes from the environment through our sense organ and they go to our the sensory register in our brain and where these sensory inputs stay for only few minutes few seconds and then they have to go to the stm what is stm short term memory how do they go do all the inputs do they enter into stm no only those sensory input which are attended and which are recognized will be passed down to the short term memory so this is very important because not all that Oh, sensory input not all the visual sights or not all the auditory inputs go into our short term memory only those sights only those hearings which are attended to and which are recognized will enter into stm our short term memory so that is why we say in the uh, classroom the teacher always say to the students please pay attention it has become a uh, ritual please pay attention your attention students but the students they never attend so that is why it uh, does not even pass to the short term memory leave alone long term memory so you should pay attention to what you are seeing and then recognize it and pay attention to what you are hearing recognize it then it will enter into your short term memory 
where the information or hold there only for 20 to 30 seconds not more than that and in short term memory the storage is very little it can hold only a very few items when compared to the LTM or the long term memory in short term memory the storage capacity is very less where the information or the knowledge the facts stay there only for few seconds and only a few items is stored and whatever information stored in the short term memory should be passed down to the long term memory how can it happen automatically does it go to long term memory no it needs a rehearsal the most important part rehearsal what is it rehearsal you repeat it revise it rehearse it only then this material this information this knowledge will be passed on to a long-term memory which can hold a tremendous amount of information for a long time maybe month maybe years maybe decades how do we remember certain things which happened some 50 years before. How do we remember the names of the friend who studied with you in your class 6th after 30 years or 40 years or 50 years? So this is LTM. So this is long term memory. It can hold a tremendous amount of information. See, we remember so many names. Names of our friends, names of our family members names of our neighbors, names of our teachers, names of our politicians, names of historians, names of scientists. And then comes the dates, the birth dates of your family members, birth dates, or the, more essentially the birth, the, the dates of some historical event because they are asked in the examination. And we remember uh, the facts and we remember uh, many events so so many things are stored can be accommodated in ltm for years together and please notice that they are how are they stored they are categorized see all a a a are together b b b b are together and c c c are in separate group all the other etc are in separate group so they are categorized so this categorization is very important classification you need to classify the information group the information in your brain so how is it possible you have to Process the information. So first attend to the inputs, recognize it, then rehearse it, revise it, and group it, associate with the meanings, associate with the names, associate with the pictures. Think about it. Process it. And then group it. And store them in categories then they will stay longer in your long term memory and it could be retrieved faster if they are categorized then you can retrieve the information faster if you put all the similar information in one group form a group mentally uh, form a similar concept a group of similar concept a group of similar objects then retrieval becomes easier and then it comes to your short term memory then it goes to the output so this is very important for any student learning anything how does our memory process the information so the point to be uh, emphasized here the point you should pay attention is that if at all you want to remember anything 
whether it is short term or the long term then you need to pay attention to it pay your or focus on it concentrate on it receive it recognize it identify it then pass it to the short term memory and then pass it to the long term memory for your later use by rehearsal 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 by repetition 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 and and rehearsal is of two types maintenance rehearsal and elaborate rehearsal what is maintenance Yes, like what you do for your cycle every day. After you come back home, you just uh, dust it with a duster. That's all. That is maintenance rehearsal. But in the weekend, what do you do? You just do the overall. You just uh, you know uh, take a liquid and then uh, open up the parts of the cycle. remove the screws and the bolts and put it in the oil and clean it so you do the entire business that is the elaborate rehearsal in the same way you have to do rehearsal maintenance rehearsal every day you come back home from the classroom just go through it once or twice enough that forms the maintenance rehearsal that will keep the things fresh in your memory in the weekend when you have some uh, ample time some few hours at your disposal then do the elaborate rehearsal what is elaborate rehearsal go through the each and every point each and every example ask question yourself why is it so why is this happening what is this and how come this is an example for this why not this find out the answer underline it repeat it so this is elaborate rehearsal asking yourself questions like what how when why which so that is elaborate rehearsal that will help in consolidating your memory in the long term memory so that they are stored there in the form of categories and which will later on help you to retrieve it faster quicker and accurately now the next model of teaching is social interactive model where the constructivism is the philosophy of learning and bandura social learning is a part of the social interactive model and he uses various terms like vicarious learning vicarious reinforcement what is vicarious learning is just copying copy somebody from the society when do we copy when something some behavior is accepted when some behavior is recognized when some behavior is appreciated by all we would like to imitate it we would like to model it we would like to copy it that is called vicarious learning doing by observing others in the society it could be anybody in the society if we see some behavior being accepted or recognized by or appreciated by somebody we would like to uh, copy it so that is vicarious learning and uh, vicarious reinforcement when it gets uh, appreciation when it gets accepted we try to do it again and that is also known as observational learning modeling and imitation so all these terms refer to the social learning where learning occurs in a social setup that could be anywhere in your classroom or in your neighbor's house or in the society or in a bus stand or in a train so that is social learning by interacting or by copying by observing by copying doing it we learn things bandura gives four steps for his observational or vicarious learning first is attention then retention then production motivation first we attend to somebody's else behavior 
and then we retain it in our memory then we produce we copy it the behavior and if it is reinforced we are motivated to do it again so there are four steps leading to observational learning of bandura for for uh, i can cite uh, one example your favorite example uh, rajinikanth's uh, mannerism see how many youngsters we see doing the hairstyle or uh, playing with the uh, cigarettes why why do they do it they just they, they want to have that uh, uh, heroism worship like what uh, rajini superstar receives uh, they want to get that attention from the uh, people public so that is why they take him as a model and they copy him and they imitate him to receive the same kind of uh, recognition this is also a kind of observational learning complementary to bandura social learning theory is vygotsky's social cognitive development theory and here the main uh, emphasis is that the social interaction plays an important role in the development of cognition so whatever you do in the society whatever interaction you indulge in the society with anybody that leads to learning some kind of learning and this is especially true for language learning because we pick up so many words from the society just imagine a 2 years old child he comes back from the school picking up so many new words his uh, vocabulary is uh, uh, will grow so faster that you might be the mother might be wondering where has he picked up these words from uh, we never speaks these words at home but he brings it home from the school so this is this is called social cognitive development theory we get from the society by our interaction with so many person we interact with so many with the drivers with the uh, peer groups with the teachers with our uh, uh, senior classmate junior classmates and with our workmates with our neighbors see we interact with so many people and we learn from each and every one of them that is what the whole idea social cognitive development and vygotsky in his social cognitive development theory he also uses a word acronym called zpd zpd is zone of proximal development here you see three circles and the innermost circle is where the learner can do unaided without any help what a student can do that is the innermost circle and the middle circle is the zpd the zone of proximal development and it is what the learner can do with guidance See, there is a difference what he can do without any guidance and what he can do with guidance guidance of course from the teacher or the mentor so that is the zone of proximal development only the terminology is different you know that he can do something on his own and with the help of the guidance from the teacher he can do something more that is zone of proximal development he uses the special acronym zpd and you should be familiar with that because sometimes the question may be asked what is zpd and what zpd is the zone of proximal development which means what the learner can do with some guidance from the teacher and the outermost circle is what the learner cannot do with assistance or without assistance what he cannot do that is not in his scope the age or maybe the time and vigorsi also believed that learning occurs in two levels first in the social level he learns in the society through his interactions that is the social level and then he learns it at the individual level so he integrates whatever he learns from the society into his a uh, mental structure that is individual level now the fourth model of teaching is personal development model 
which is also known as non directive teaching model because here the there is no directions of the teacher is involved and uh, this model personal development model supports the uh, theory of humanistic psychology positive psychology and which lays emphasis on the uh, self concept of a person and it believes in the positive self direction and independence of the individual and also on the developing curiosity and the creativity among the learners and also here the affect domain the affective domain uh, the emotions values are developed by this model of teaching and no uh, directions of the teacher is involved and the climate here is student centered with this we come to the end of the presentation i hope you enjoyed this video on uh, models of teaching and the scope for each model and if you like the video please subscribe to my channel pon virus title and click the bell icon so that you will receive notification when i present the next video on the paper 1 of ugc net exam thank you